Welcome back, guys. Ladies, gentlemen, little cats and dogs. It's Big Sammy. We're working on the uh, R type, the Jaguar XJR Supercharged 4.205. Okay. Um, this is called the X350, I think it is. Um, we had an engine code that come on it, and the engine code says upstream O2 sensor is not working. So we checked the codes, the engine light's still there. Um, I'm just gonna show you some things. Hopefully if you're dealing with this, it doesn't have to be a XJ, I've been told. Uh, it can be a 4.2. I think the cylinder layout and the actual um, O2 sensors are the same, but I'm gonna show you where it is on the XJR, just in case you have this and this is the way it is. Um, let me show you the parts first. So, they tell me on forums and whatnot that Denso, all right, here we go, let me see if it, the get a Denso uh, O2 sensor. There it is, it's already out of the package. There is our anti-seas, which we're gonna put on there to make sure that we can get them back out. Um, they recommend a O2 sensor um, spark, uh, not sorry, socket, which is this, and let me see, it will, fit right in there like so and this is a 7 8 right there and the little crack in there is just so the wire can go around and we're going to use a 3 8 um, ratchet that's to get it to get the old one out and the old one in uh i'm oh, sorry the old one out and the new one in so there's our parts our, our tools First of all, what you want to do is you want to disconnect your battery. I just took the ground off, so it's killed all the lights to everything. As you see, there's no lights on there. The car is dead. And there's a reason why you do that. There's also, you know, to make sure you don't touch no wires or burn up any of the ECUs or uh, electronics in it. But it's also to relearn or let the car relearn um, that there's a new part there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna climb up under here. We got it on our ramps. We got a little block up underneath the back seat. I mean back seat. Got a little rock up underneath the back wheel right there. And I'm gonna take you guys under the car, show you where the upstream and the downstream is. And hopefully y'all would uh, know where, where yours is at. Anyways, if you look at it, and I'm going to tell you one more thing because a lot of people just think, you know, the right side is the right side or bank one is bank one, whatever. If you look at these old forums or some of the forums, mind you that these are British cars. So British cars, they're, they can be right-hand drives too. So right-hand drives or left-hand drives. In the States, we are left-hand drive. We drive on the, uh, on the left-hand side. And so... When they talk on the forums, they'll say, when you're sitting in the driver's seat, it's gonna be on the right, the left, whatever. Well, that may be so in a British forum because they're on the right side. So you gotta understand if you do the wrong O2 sensor, you may not be fixing the problem. But in this case, when you're on the driver's seat, the right side is, or bank one is this one. And the reason why this is an old mechanic thing and we're going to see if we can do it here but you can always tell which one is bank one or bank two because one of these cylinders are going to sit ahead so if you can go right here and you can look at this you can look at this cover usually all this stuff comes off and you can really tell it but in this case we're not going to take it all off but if you see this one sits on this cover and then we're going to go over here and we can see this cylinder head, see? It's sticking out further this way. That's how they say in the old mechanic world that this was bank one. So it's one, three, five, and seven, I believe. And then you got two, four, six, eight on this side if you're an eight cylinder like this. All right, so hope that helps you find out which it is, uh, what bank is what. So this one says bank one upstream, which is and everything it is the one that sits ahead of the 
cat. And we're gonna scrunch up under here. There's our catalytic converter right there. See it, see it, cat. Jaguar, cat, okay. All right, so there is our, there's our O2 sensor here. And I'm gonna try to get you up underneath there. I don't know if you can see that, but there is one. Oh, wait a minute, it should be over here. There should be one right there. Um, go on this side, I can see it a lot better. Ugh. Now this is the other bank, but there's our O2 sensor right there. And this one looks new. The guy that I bought it off of, he said that he replaced all the O2 sensors, which I think he replaced this one and he replaced the back one, but he didn't do both sides. Hence why the, the engine is coming out or the coat is coming out. So there we go. We look back up over here and there's our other O2 sensor in the cat right there. So that would be the downstream and the one right here. Let's see right there is the upstream. So now we know which one we're working on. So let's scrunch about back here. We're going to grab our wrench. We're gonna put our wrench on here like this or our socket. And then make sure that it's on there nice and tight. And there it is. So you zoom in. And I'm gonna to try to put you all down so I can use two hands because the last thing I want to do is strip the sucker out and then uh, I'll be sad. Let me see if I can find you a good spot to sit. Let me see here. Sorry for the shakiness. Like I said, it is what it is. All right. I don't think we're going to get a good one. Let me see if I can put it up right here. Oh. Sorry for my big thumbs in the way. There we go. All right. I'm going to make sure that this thing is loosening. I'm going to put it right in there. Uh-oh. Put it right in there like that. And say I'm gonna try to get around this ground wire if I can. Bear with me. It's not really that tight, but if that ground wire wasn't in the way, it would be a lot easier. All right, there we go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold this all on there. I'm gonna try to reach my hand around here and I'm gonna try to turn it. There we go. All right, she's loose. So what I'm gonna do now, try to loosen it or try to get it out of the hole. Let's see if I can just there we go. We'll just move the wrench around a little bit and put it back on there. Okay. Move it again. And then we're going to turn it. And there we go. Let's turn. I think I can get that out with my hand. Pick this off. And then we're going to just turn it out. All right. And there we go, there, there it is. Then we're gonna take it off. There's the plug right over here. And we're gonna see 
Now to take this off here, it should just clip off. Bear with me in the middle. Oh, there we go. All right. So that's the back side of it. And then there's the little tab. Just unhook it like that. And it is off. All right. So let's go on back. Now, you guys might be saying, Sammy, why don't you just take it to a Jag dealer? Well, Jag dealer wants about $400 to do this. This here part at uh, AutoZone was about 150 with some taxes. I think it was 139 taxes hit it. There's your new one, there's your old one. So we can truly tell that this is the old one. Um, we're gonna look around on it and see if we see any, any uh, actual markings or anything on it showing this a ja uh, actual at Jaguar um, part. Well, this one would probably be a Ford part, but it doesn't it doesn't look like it's a it doesn't look like it's an aftermarket. It looks like it's probably the original. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure you got four prongs, four prongs. Make sure your fittings are the same. There they are. Here's our new one. All right, and then. We'll going to do too you're going to put some of this anti-seize on on the threads right here so that if it's a situation that we ever have to go back and do it again um, that we can get the sucker out so we're going to break it out break this okay then you're going to squeeze And what I'm going to try not to do is get it all over the the, uh, the sensor itself, right? The last thing you want to do is get something on the sensor, the computer start reading this goop, and then next thing you know, you have a problem with your new sensor because of the fact that you put that anti-seize all over it. Okay, nice coating. You see that? got some on the sensor right there that's okay I got some trusty napkins here I'm gonna clean my fingers off and then I'm gonna just give it one more little run right there and then we're gonna look at all of it and then we got everything all this nice anti seize over where it needs to go all right all right we're going to call that good. So let's go back under here. And we'll put it back in. And like I said, uh, you guys might be asking or somebody might be asking, how long does this just take? Well, it really takes the amount of time to get the car up and get it moved in the area. Uh, that's probably the setup is the, probably the most. Get your tools and everything else. So... What we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in with our hand first. We're gonna make sure our threads start good. Alright, so it's in there. See it right there. Threaded it in by hand. Go ahead and put y'all down one more time. Let's see if I can put you put you down oh, wait a minute let me close it up make it where you can see sorry now i know there's torque specs on this but i'm not a torque spec kind of guy i know it's got a little washer and i'm thinking like those washers are usually 20 something pounds so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tighten it up by hand as much as i can all right, I'm gonna reach around here, try to grab my little socket, and then I'm gonna put this 
in the hole again of the socket. All right. I'm going to reach in here and I'm going to just my ratchet is kind of crappy. Alright. Oh, that was going the right way already. Okay. Give it one more little turn. What I'm doing too is I'm making sure that my my socket stays nice and firm on that O2 sensor because I don't want it to skip and I don't want to round it round it off. Like that would be not good for the next person or for yourself if you ever do do this again. So we don't want that to be an issue. Okay, that's probably good. It's snug and it's a three it's a three eighths ratchet so it's not super super tight. Last thing you wanna do is you wanna you don't wanna take the uh, you don't wanna round off the you don't wanna sorry, stretch stretch the uh, the threads. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook this back up here into the hole. We're also looking at the, the pieces here and make sure that all the little pieces are in there and nothing's broke. Cause the last thing you want is that to be broken too. Snap it in. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it right back in the place that we came from. All right. And there you go. One O2 sensor done. So now what we're gonna do is kind of looking at things too as I'm in here, kind of checking out our new car, looking at the things that he's supposedly done to make sure he done them. There's your, there's your sensor for the rear one. No, 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 sorry, that's the the rear sensor is right there. And like I said, it loops around and goes in there and goes in the side. So if you're looking for the downstream, that's your downstream. All right, so let's take our stuff out. I'm gonna go back around. Let's go put the battery on. Well, I'll tell you what, let's, let's Clean our hands up a little bit. Cleaning our hands off just a little bit so we ain't touching everything nice and greasy. All right, so we're gonna come in here and put our battery back on. There she goes. We're gonna tighten that up too. My bad, wrong way. All right, check it like that. All right, we're not gonna do anything yet. Uh, let's see, we got the keys in it. No key. Bear with me. We're gonna go. Let's 
go grab the key. Luckily, we're not all the way. Luckily, we're not uh, too far from the key. We're going to start it up. And hopefully, the, uh, the thing there, the computer goes off. There's our keys. One Jaguar key. Stay tuned for El Camino stuff next. All right. So now that we're going to crank her up, we got power. See the power? I'm going to start her up. Looking for that engine light to go out. Maybe. And if not, I might have to I might have to reset it. It's got to relearn the system too, so that's probably one of the things. But it's running real bad. There it is. It's starting to run better. Go ahead and close her up because I got a feeling it's going to be all right. And that's why you disconnect the battery so that the thing will learn what's going on. Now I might have to go in there with my little uh, car scanner and turn that off because it's not going off yet. I'm not sponsored by this channel, but if you guys um, want to get a good scanner, you have your um, thing on your phone, your app on your phone, and this is like this peak. It does uh, hybrid cars and everything else. Check them out. We're just going to put it in there, and I'm going to read the um, code on the car. I'm trying not to touch anything on the car because, see, I got all that on me and I don't want that stuff in my leather. Anyways, I hope this helps somebody. Um, I'm sure the light will go off as soon as I turn the car, uh, put the scanner back on it. But that's how you change the O2 sensor upstream on a 2005 Jaguar XJ6. Y'all like, comment, subscribe, uh, do what you do. Um, let me know if you got one. I appreciate y'all coming by and checking it out. But uh, so far it's running better. We're going to take that code off and we'll see what happens. Appreciate y'all coming by. Peace out.